And welcome out and about with Marty Nolenberg. I'm Charlie Langton. Thank you for joining us today. We have a lot to talk about here, and we've got great people to talk about a lot of things, including the budget. What happened not too long ago in Lansing? Of course, Marty Nolenberg is here, and we have a special guest tonight, Senator John Papa George. My pleasure. Senator, thank you for being here. Let me take both of you back, if I may. 4.18 in the morning, I believe it was reported. That was the deal. October 1st, to avoid a state shutdown. Marty, where were you at 4.18 in the morning well, on that at, day? At 4.19, I was in my car driving home. <laughs> take us back. What happened on that? What was, what was going on there? Well, you know, the, it was a very historic, interesting time. Uh, being a member of the House... Uh, we were in the house uh, 19 days in a row. And, and so it all culminated over uh, how to settle this budget. Um, do we increase taxes or reduce spending? And at the end of the day, the governor got her wish. She got a $1.35 billion tax increase. That's the long and the short of it. Why did it take so long? Senator, you well, were there. You've been there before. It happened one day in May. What happened? One Let me explain day. how the process works. There are 19 budgets. Ten of them start in the Senate. Nine start in the House. By April, we're done, and the budget is based on the governor's recommendation. Then the budgets switch, and in May, five people get in a room. <clears throat> the governor, Speaker of the House, Senate Majority Leader, and the two chairs of approves. And their job in that meeting is to take available money, put it across 19 budgets. It's a very painful meeting. You've got people with different views. And when they were done with that meeting, those numbers for those 19 bid, uh, budgets called targets go to 38 budget chairmen, of which I am one. 19 in the Senate, 19 in the House. And now that you have a budget number, you can do your budget. Is that called a target? It's called a target. Granholm walked into that room in shortcut language and said, pretend there's an additional $1.8 billion on the table. Billion dollars? Billion. There were no targets coming out of that meeting. We had no targets. I finally got targets for my budget earlier this week. Which is after the, obviously. Half way after. after. Mm -hmm. We're on a continuation budget right now. Now, the, the point of this whole thing is, here we are, desperate for numbers, and the governor is saying the legislature is sitting on its hands. Of course we were. We had no number, and she did it that day in May. Is she one vote of five? or is she, or No, is there were three equal? Dems in the room, and the other two Dems must have nodded, because there were only two Republicans in the room. You need three out of five. Now, we have to repair that process. Because if we do not, we have destroyed something that for years allowed Republicans and Democrats to get together and put a budget together. Where was the 1.8 extra billion dollars coming from? Aha, that's interesting. 900 million was because the original estimate was too high. I've got a constitutional amendment that'll take care of that in the future. 200 million was pay raises to state employees that the governor negotiated. And $700 million was brand new programs, 17 of them in a very rosy state of the state this year. That's the $1.8 billion you heard about. And, and, and from my perspective, you know, if you relate you know, budget from your own household, um, if, if you don't have the income coming in, you certainly shouldn't be increasing your expenditures. And that's kind of what happened with its budget. Let me go back to what, what, what the senator was saying, though, because the process, apparently, if you do have a target, then you go back to your individual, com uh, your individual uh, committees or whatever sure. it may be, and then you, you know you've got X amount of dollars, it's easy, and that's the way it's been done every single yeah. year and forever. And it disciplines the process. If you come to me, I've got a $3 billion general government budget. You come to me and say, I want to do this, that, and the other, and I say, listen, I got this number, and uh, what do we stop doing to do that instead? It disciplines the system. So no and, and one had a target. So no anyone, one. We so got were the, you using old target it, numbers? No, there's use? nothing you could do. And it would avoid the, the three weeks of the House being in session, night after night after night, all day long, uh, 
because we didn't have any, as John Senator indicated, we had no, no numbers to work with. It, it's a faulty process. Is it a fault of the administration? Leadership. Or yes. Leadership. Absolutely. You do not leave a target meeting and saying, I'm sorry, there are no targets. Mm -hmm. The next thing I do is I put those five cats in a room and I'd say, if you don't come out with targets by 30 May, then you stay in session without pay till you do. Other targets? Other now. than that, I have no opinion there, on this. As on October 1st, the date by Constitution, the, the, the government has no money. You cannot appropriate any money after October 1st. That's in the Constitution. Did you have targets on October 1st? No, no. but what we did is we, the Senate passed a continuation budget for 30 days so that nothing would shut down. The, the governor said, I will veto that thing until you give me my money. Now, words, we were desperate because on 6 October, we got bond payments to make. And if we don't make them, it'll take us a decade to get our credit rating back. I'm sorry, Marty. Marty? No, I, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, very well said. Um, it's a backward process. We should have been looking at, as John indicated, the targets. You, know, you, you take the money that you have, um, and you should try to spend the money that you have. Um, and if you don't have enough money, like this Michigan does, like, with the situation that we're in today, um, we shouldn't be raising revenues first and then coming up with cuts later. And that's exactly what we did. Let me read a quote. Uh, when times were good in the 90s, our leaders in Lansing decided that rather than salting away some of the resources for a rainy day, they would cut taxes. That's the failure. The failure to set aside funds for hard times uh, is the key reason for the financial crisis that confronted the governor and it legislature. Like, you know who said that? Yeah, Governor Grano. Governor no, Mil well, Milliken. Milliken. Governor Milliken no, said that. Yeah, well, governor Milliken. Well, he, he's blaming the night. Yeah. Senator, you were there. He's talking about you. Yeah, well, that's why next week my second constitutional amendment says no matter what the revenue estimate is, which is done by very smart people, but they say if you accept this number, 22 months it'll come out even. Don't worry. Never happens. The real number is 96%. I did a 10-year moving average. That 4% represents $900 million. My amendment says, whatever the number is, you budget at 96% of that number. Half of what the governor wanted. That's right. <laughs>